Let's take the derivative of the factorial function. That's gonna be so awesome. Okay guys, so let's go straight to it. We're supposed to evaluate the derivative of the x factorial function. How the hell are we supposed to do it? Because, well, as you can see, the factorial function is, well, not quite differentiable. I mean, if I were to plot this, I'm gonna set this to one, two, three, one, well, let's say I'm gonna scale this down one, two, three, four, five, and six. Well, the factorial of one is one, the factorial of two is two, the factorial of, of three is six. That's my y axis and my x axis. But the problem, is, the problem is that, well, this graph continues, but it's only dots. It's like it's not really a connected graph, we only have dots there because x factorial is a function in discrete, no, it's a discrete function that only takes in integers and spits out integers. And well, this function is everything, but it's not continuous. And what, what the, what's number one condition that a function has to satisfy in order to be differentiable, where it has to be continuous. So, well, that's pretty shitty, <laughs> because how are we supposed to differentiate something that is absolutely not continuous? And well, this is a beautiful place to introduce to you guys the gamma function because there's actually a pretty nice way to go on and connect those dots on this graph, to smooth this graph out and to actually be able to calculate the, um, the factorial of every single real number there is. And this is called, and this way of doing it is called the gamma function. So the gamma function is equal to the integral from zero to infinity of t, some t to the power of x minus one, of x minus one, of x minus one, multiplied by e to the negative t power dt. And we know that gamma of x is equal to x minus one factorial. And well, what the hell? That doesn't even work. It does. So first of all, well, we know that the zero factorial, we know that the zero factorial, I'm gonna do it in orange, zero factorial is equal to one. And so the gamma of one, which is equal to zero factorial, should also be equal to one. So let's check it. We have that the, I wanted to say gamma here, not f. <laughs> gamma of one will be equal to the integral from zero to infinity of t to the power of 1 minus 1 is just 0 times e to the negative t power. Well, this is just the integral from 0 to infinity of just e to the power of negative t. But this thing's just the limit, uh, so let's say r approaches infinity of negative e to negative t all, uh, all in the boundaries of 0 to t. But what's the limit as r approaches infinity of negative, uh, negative e to the power of negative t? Well, that's just a zero, so we're gonna get zero minus and then minus one because that's negative e to the power of zero. Lovely, so this is gonna be all equal to one. Well, so well, we see that gamma of one, which is supposed to be factorial of zero, is actually equal to one, that's zero factorial. Well, that's pretty, pretty interesting, but well, yes, no, not really enough for us to say that gamma is actually factorial, but there is an, another pretty interesting uh, property of this function, which is that whenever we have, uh, well, just the straightforward gamma of x, and this is the integral from zero to infinity of t to the x minus one to, uh, times e to the negative t dt, then well, if we were to just plug to this, to just go on, go ahead and apply integration by parts here, we'll say that this is the f prime and e to the negative t is gonna be the g prime, or maybe I will do it in a different color, yes, yeah, so that's gonna be the g function. So after applying the integration with, uh, by parts, what, I'm gonna get, what we're gonna get is t to the power of x all over x multiplied by e to the negative t right there, on in the bounds of zero to infinity, and then negative integral from zero to infinity of, 
well now just t to the power of x all over x multiplied by the derivative of e to the negative t which is just negative e to the power of t i just suck this negative here in front of this integral and change the negative sign to a plus sign here and that's going to be all dt however well this limit is going to be definitely zero because the exponential function is going to just take over the the polynomial we've got right over there so that's going to be zero so this entire thing is going to be equal to zero plus the integral from zero to from zero to infinity of t to the power of x all over x times e to the power of i should have written negative t there negative t but well x is just a constant a constant with respect to t but we are taking the integral with respect to t there so we can just go on and take this one over x outside of this shit <laughs> just one minute so we will be able to just get that in one over x outside of this integral which will give us one over x times the integral from zero to infinity of t to the power of x times e to the power of negative t dt but well what is this thing well what is the integral from zero to infinity of t to the power of x times e to the power of negative t. Well, this thing is just gamma of x plus one. And so we see that gamma of x plus one, so this thing right here multiplied by one over x right there, multiplied by one over x is equal to gamma of x because this thing right here was equal to gamma of x. So is equal to gamma of x and so we see quite nicely that gamma of x plus one is equal to x times gamma of x and well this pretty much just states that it is actually the factorial function and that well we can pretty lovely just extend the factorial using the gamma to everything there is so i will just mm, i will just say that this is the uh the 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 gamma Oh my god, the gamma function, the gamma of x, yeah. But his it, graph is quite honestly a little bit different, but I, nobody really cares about that. And so now we can take the derivative finally after introducing that beautiful function, but first of all, let me fix the light. Okay guys, so let's now take the derivative of the factorial of x, but we're not going to be taking the derivative of the factorial of x, we're going to be taking the derivative of the gamma of x. So let's go on and do it. Well, what is it gonna give us? So we would like to calculate the d over dx, so the derivative of the integral, yeah, the integral from zero, well, that's an awful integral. Oh, now it's better. From zero to infinity of t to x minus one times e to the negative t dt. But, well, the nice thing is that we're taking the derivative with respect to x, so this guy right over there, but the integral is with respect to some other variable, to the variable t. So there is just no problem for us to kind of sneak this derivative inside of this integral and just, well, take the, uh, take the derivative of t to the power of x minus 1 because e to the negative t is just going to be constant with respect to the x to the variable that we're taking the derivative with respect to and so this thing is going to be just nicely equal to the integral from zero to infinity of the derivative of t to the power of x minus one is going to be t to the power of x minus one multiplied by the natural log of t by the natural log of t and then everything multiplied by e to the power of negative t dt and well Ladies and gentlemen, this is, this is the, oh, this is the, oh, I'm not good with technology, the derivative of x factorial. Hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next one.